We just had our coin toss. Mr. Hackley will be doing the opening three-minute statement, and the closing statement will be done by, Ms., uh, by Sandy. And also, Mr. Hackley will be receiving the first question from my panelists. So let's begin. Sorry, I came up too slow. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Jeff Hackley. I am a candidate for circuit clerk. Uh, I decided to be the candidate for circuit clerk after my job at the village started to see things that just, just didn't look right. Uh, we have a lot of concern with the actual way the office kind of works. You'll see by my brochure, I have three goals that I want to work on. Uh, those goals are to collect $16 million of uncollected fines uh, that are in the basement of the courthouse. Those are things that if we had the money, we can utilize that for the things within the county. Uh, I also want to work to utilize uh, a better uh, system of the countywide record system. Uh, right now, the circular clerk's office does not use that system. Uh, by using the system, it will expedite a, a lot of the things that need to be done. And Okay, there we go. And the last thing I want to do is bring an amnesty program. I want to get people the opportunity to pay fines. Uh, and I want to get them to get their driver's licenses back. I want them to be able to uh, uh, go back out in the community and drive a car. Uh, to do that, uh, it's going to take a lot of work. And one of the things that uh, I found was that by working with or actually speaking with the employees, I think it can be done real well. Uh, it just needs the, the time and the effort uh, to get that money back and put it back to good use. Thank you. CNS. Good evening. I'm Sandy Cianci, and I am your circuit clerk. I'm seeking re-election as the circuit clerk because I enjoy working with the people and serving the public. The people that need the services of the circuit clerk's office are not usually there for happy occasions, and the employees in the circuit clerk's office strive to make the, the visit as stress-free as possible. My accomplishments have been that I've increased the collection debt um, of debt by $400,000 in 2015 through the Illinois Comptroller Local Debt Recovery Program. I've streamlined customer service by combining offices for convenience of the attorneys and self-represented litigants. And despite the budget cuts, we have maintained excellent service to the public with less staff. Once a new state's attorney is elected, I plan to meet with him to discuss our current collection efforts and learn what direction he will take implementing the changes if they occur. The circuit clerk administers the collection efforts under the direction of the state's attorney and in accordance with Illinois state law. The circuit clerk's office has collected almost $4.3 million in the last six years that I've been in office. My, my other goals are, um, for the next four years include creating additional efficiencies in the office through computerization. The state Supreme Court mandated for the e-appeals for all case types by July 1st, 2015 and e-filing of all civil cases by January 1st of 2018. The circuit clerk administers the, or the circuit clerk e-file mandate will completely change the way we conduct business in the circuit clerk's office. Attorneys and self-represented litigants will have to submit their new civil case filings and civil case pleadings electronically by January 1st of 2018. I am preparing by working with the outside vendors and with other department heads to ensure the process is as seamless as possible. Kankakee County is slated to begin the process on December 1st of 2016. It's a huge project. Public computer stations will have to be created and um, as well as training staff on the new processes. These mandates will create efficiencies not only for our office, but also for the courts, the attorneys, and self-represented litigants. I have experience working in the main office as the filing clerk, in the courtroom as a minute clerk, and a floating minute clerk with all the judges in most case types, and I have six years experience as the elected official. 
With the current budget crisis and all the aforementioned state mandates, it's crucial to the voters of Kankakee that I be reelected to complete the projects at hand and lead the circuit clerk's office through the next phase of governmental business. Thank you. Mr. Jackson, you have, you, as the panel, you have the first question, and it goes to Mr. Hackley. Thank you. Uh, I, of course, am interested in the utilization of minorities in, in county government. I have had the, the uh, privilege of traveling in many counties in my business uh, and visiting courthouses around the state of Illinois. And unfortunately, I must report that in most of those county courthouses, you could shoot a shotgun uh, at the circuit clerk's office and never expect to hit an African American. Um, uh, do you see a problem uh, within the circuit clerk's office in Kankakee with minority utilization? And if so, what do you do, uh, plan to do to change that? What, what I see is it, it, we have to establish some policies and procedures and just exactly how we do the hiring. Uh, one of the things that uh, uh, I can bring to, to that part is I was the Kalia manager for our village, uh, which means that uh, I took care of all of our standards. And standards, part of the things were to make sure that uh, we recruit correctly, uh, whether that meant that uh, we went to colleges, whether we went to uh, areas where we had to make sure that we can show people that we are doing our best to recruit those people. So wherever the people may be, that's what we need to do. So we need policies and procedures on how to recruit. Thank you. Since I've been circuit clerk, I have hired minorities, and they have been doing very well. They've been promoted to further positions as well. What made you think that they wouldn't do well? I didn't. No, I didn't. No, I didn't mean that to be derogatory. Um, I actually have posted a position today that I will be hiring for a minute clerk for the judge's courtroom, and I welcome everybody and anybody to apply. One of the most underserved minorities in our office is men. We have not one man working in our office, and I would welcome any men to join the office as well. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Fry, question to Mrs. Cianci. Ms. Cianci, you sent out a press release just recently uh, mentioning how the county has recovered $4.65 million in unpaid fines through two initiatives. Is that correct? Yes, that okay. is. Okay. Meanwhile, Mr. Hackley has mentioned uh, in his literature 16 million fines out there. What is your um, thoughts on these fines? Has there been progress? Does there need to be more progress in collecting these fines? Yes, there has been great progress. Um, the reason one of the, the initiatives that he is seeking to do that he wants to head up the collection process and that's under the state's attorney's direction that's under state law um, if you read that part of the press release it said that that's that it's under the direction of the state's attorney um, the Illinois comptrollers program has been very fruitful for us and I expect that to continue in the future and um, that's about it. This is a depressed area, and people, they don't have the money to pay. That's the other part of the problem. To piggyback off that, first of all, we actually have to know that someone has to have a fine collected. One of the problems that we see is, is that you can look at court view, and court view will show you things that says the defendant was found guilty, and then it says, it was referred to the villages to collect. The problem is, is when I ask the villages, are you being told to collect, there's no such list. So what's happening is, is the villages don't even know that the people are supposed to have a collection in progress. Uh, the other part about the eyedrop system, the eyedrop system is a free system. It's offered by the state. We use it in the village of Bradley, and I think they piggyback when we used it. The problem is, is they then gave it to Harris and Harris, and now Harris and Harris is charging a fee to use the free state system. So now you, the offender, have to pay the fine. 
Well, we're going to continue that, and Ms. Yancey will have an additional time. I'm just curious, what is Harris and Harris? What is Harris that? and Harris is a, a, the company that uh, collects uh, debt for the uh, for the, the county. Uh, so when there's a, a collection needed, uh, it would go to those people, the Harris and Harris. Okay, so we got that. And the question that Mr. Fragis uh, asked, this is the second part, and this is from the audience. So we have this revenue out there, right? Yes, sir. But it's not being collected. So the question here is, what will you do to recover some of the lost revenue sitting in the, how, uh, the courthouse basement uncollected? So that's the second part. So you will get uh, his question in the second part. So can I start the basement? If you're there. Okay, let's do the basement. Okay, I met with the, uh, the group uh, uh, that is from the circuit clerk's office. Great people. Uh, they want to work but there's a limited amount. So what we do is, is we now involve all of our people. That means I go to Bourbonnais, I go to Kankakee, I go to the other towns and I say, help, help us collect. I, in my spare time at the Village of Bradley, put things in eyedrop, which is the collection system. I've collected 33% of the village's outstanding debt in my spare time as I'm doing my records work, okay? So when we went to their office and said, could you help us by giving us a list of the people who owe us money? We were told, there's no such list. We can't do it. We have to get help from the other communities. If I can tell another community to collect the debt, that means the costs are gonna come back to the county. So the county wins. All right, thank you, Mr. Hackley. So Mr. Fry, can you ask the question? And I will rephrase the second part to, uh, Mrs. Siasi. No, but he, no, she has, she has, the, have not had the second part of the question. The question that you just asked him. Okay, I, I had asked, has there prog been progress made in collecting fines, and does there need to be more progress made? And I said yes, but I wanted to address actually some of the things that Mr. Hackley said. When the minutes said that they were referred to the village for collection, Bradley is the only self prosecuted village uh, that comes to court. Everybody else is prosecuted under the state's attorney's office. Well, so yes. when the village attorney is in court, I imagine the village attorney has a list. The village attorney writes down who was there, who, what, what they pled guilty to or what they were found guilty for, if they didn't show up or whatever, and he should be able to take that back to his office and let them know from there. So it's not in my hands or, in, or the state's attorney's hands to do the collection. Harris & Harris is a third party um, collection agency. They are attorneys and they are hired as a special, pro they're appointed as a special prosecutor by the state's attorney's office. So what they do is they, take the debt and then they work the debt and then when they can't find the people then that's when they send it we made the agreement and sent it to the Illinois Comptroller's office. So to get a better understanding for the audience and, and the citizens of our county the state's attorney hires the third party. They appoint. They appoint. So is that because our, uh, the circuit clerk cannot don't have enough staff? Or? No the circuit clerk has no authority, no authority. to do any of that. None. Okay. All right. Mr. Taylor, you have the question, and the question is to Ms. Uh, Cianci. My, my question has to do with the uh, um, funds that haven't been collected. What is the top two areas that haven't been collected in? For example, what kind of money, who owes it, that type of thing? Well, mostly it's the felonies, and that's because they are, um, those are higher crimes, so they come with higher cost orders and, and judgments. Um, we've been, uh, congr not congratulated, but commended for the fact that we turn over our debt as soon as we can to the collection agency, and they've told me that in comparison to other counties that we collect at a higher rate than other counties. Uh, there's other counties that uh, they are able to charge a percentage, and um, it's part of the Clerk of the Court Act, and we don't do that. Um, I can get into that later, explain no, how that go goes. Go ahead, you got, we got time. Okay, go so um, 
the like Will County, they they for late fees they they assess a late fee, and it's five percent for for thirty days, ten uh, percent for sixty days, and fifteen percent for ninety days overdue. So a one hundred dollar, a hundred and twenty dollar traffic ticket would add um, five percent would be one hundred and twenty six dollars. Then the 60 days would be $138.60, and then the 90 days would be $159.39. Then they turn it over to the outside collection agency, who then adds another 30% to that. So then the grand total for the defendant would be $207.21. So the interest that is charged, the percentage that's charged, it, it compounds, and it's so it's not a straight 60%. Okay. So then... Thank you. That's all. Mr. Hackley? It's, I'm confused. So let's see if we can go by what the minutes of their meeting say. So the minutes here say, Mr. Boyd stated that Harris and Harris cost us nothing, they, which that's true. It doesn't. They add a percentage on top of what is collected. If $100 is due, they collect 130 We get our 100 and they keep the 30 Well, here's the problem, folks. It, it is the people couldn't pay the fine to begin with. And, and we just keep adding more and adding more and adding more. Uh, and we don't need outside collection agencies. We can use the people that are working with us. Uh, I, I know that, that, that you think that it's not there, but it's there. Okay, people get money and it will get collected. Thank you. Mr. Fry, you have the next question. The question is to Mr. Hackley. Ms. Cianci is already working for a, a county government that's strapped financially, and you're attempting to. Uh, this question got a uh, lively response last time, so let's ask it again. There's a new directive to cut the county board in half. What are your thoughts about that, Mr. Hackley? I don't have a problem. Uh, I, I don't even know who my county board representative is, okay? So, I mean, that's sad. Okay, uh, so the idea that if we're going to cut it in half, if you're telling me we can cut it in half and, and keep the, sh the deputies on the street and, and, and get the offices working, then do it. Okay, uh, that, that seems like a no, no brainer. You know, so yeah, let's, whatever it's going to do, you got to keep this thing running. Right now, it's a mess. Miss Yes. I'm okay with cutting the board in half or whatever they decide to do. There's a misconception out there that they get paid a lot of money and that they in receive benefits. A lot of them actually turn their money over, they donate their money, and majority of them don't even take benefits. And it, well, there was a, there was a, a, they grandfathered the newer ones in that they couldn't, re they weren't offered um, benefits. And um, so there's only about, less than five of them that do carry insurance at this point. Mr. Jackson. Um, yeah, Mr. Jackson. Let me go back to the collection uh, situation. And I hope there's enough time for me to get back to my initial question because I don't think either one of you answered it. But for those people who are without jobs, uh, who are poor in this community, what I understand you're doing is, for those people who owe fines, you're continuing to add interest plus collection fees to the problem. Do you have any provision, or should you have any provision, for people in that category to be able to say to work their, their debt off instead of having to come up with the money? Should you, in your case, and do you, in your case? If, if I, my, do I get to start that, that's I fine think then? I you're the first one up Th on this That's one. great. Here's my brochure. It says on there, I want an amnesty program. I want you to be able to wa walk in. Uh, that's my biggest thing I see at, at, at the window of the village. I have people that are coming in, or I see arrest. We are arresting people for driving while suspended, putting them in jail, and then making them go to the jail the next morning for driving while suspended and they're suspended because they couldn't pay the $50 ticket before and now they're $250. It's crazy. Let's get a system so that we can get the, the back to the normal. 
pay the fine that you were owe, that you owe, get your driver's license back, and become a citizen that can drive their car around. Okay, so that's my part. Let's get realistic. If they don't have the money, let's find a way we can do that. And my answer to that is that the circuit clerk doesn't have the authority to do that. The judge made the order for what the fee is supposed to be. The state's attorney appointed the special prosecutor. If the new state's attorney changes direction, then by all means, we will follow through with an amnesty, um, amnesty program or whatever it is. Do you have the, the ability to make a recommendation? I don't. The fact that you haven't collected $16 million? I don't. It's all in the, it's, it's the judge's order and it's the state's attorney's direction. It's not the circuit clerk. The circuit clerk administers what the courts order, period. And that's exactly how crazy the system is. It, it, is the idea, if the, what I've seen so far in county government, it, this is mine. Don't come into my section. This is mine. Don't come into my section, okay? We all have to work as a team. I'm sorry, I take uh, Zimbalta for my leg pains, and it, it would it sure make your mouth dry. So, so we all got to get together, folks. We're, we're the county, okay? I don't care if you're the recorder of, uh, or, or the auditor. We all have to. And when you just said, can you make a suggestion? Yes, make a suggestion, okay? Because something's got to work. You can't just sit in your office and say, it's not my problem. Okay, Sandy, uh, Mr. Hackley, uh, you have about 30 to 40 seconds to comment on anything that you want to rebut or inform. Well, one of the things that Mr. Hackley brought up was about um, communication in our office about the uh, reports that the village was asking for and I had written back that we didn't have those reports. Well, I was talking to the bookkeeper the other day and she was telling me that when we changed computer systems, we sent a letter to all the municipalities and said, our new system, the reports are different than they ever were and they could be in upwards of 100 pages per report. And this is in reference to the checks that, they, that the village gets. So, um, she said, we wrote letters to everybody, and we only heard back from Aroma Park and the conservation um, police. And so they do get reports sent with their checks that explains uh, who gets paid and how much is dispersed. And we are happy to do that for anybody. It's not that we don't want to or can't do it. I have um, a printout for the last month for the Village of Bradley on the different funds that were collected and you know they can follow it that way if they wish and, and that doesn't work if you all run a checkbook before uh, and would you think that if you just trust the bank uh, and put down in your checkbook what's there when we went Mr. out Hackley, and we have yeah. a question we uh, sure and I, if I'll give you time uh, within your closing statement mr. Taylor you have the question and the questions to Ms. Siasi Yes, I have a question. One of the first questions had to do with employment of minorities. And I would assume that I'm correct if I say that both Bradley and the county of Kankakee are at least 100 years old. Would you concede to that? How many black employees are there in Bradley? And African Americans in ours, on, are you talking like at a police department, the fire totally. department? Do you know totally? We may have two or three. In the whole the village of Bradley, how many employees do you have? I couldn't tell you exactly the Give amount. Me an estimate. The estimate of employees? Yeah. I, I think we're somewhere, we have to be somewhere in the neighborhood of 100. And how many blacks do you have? And, and once again, I'll go back to, to tell you Very that. Very simple question now. How many two blacks or, do you two have? Or, I answered uh, two or three. Okay. The county of Kankakee, do you know? I don't know the whole county of Kankakee. I know we have around 400, 300 and some employees, and I don't know the exact number. I know that we have about four African Americans in our office. We're in 2016. Those numbers would be very great in 1951. Can, you can spoke, I piggyback you spoke earlier, quick you spoke earlier about standards. What standards 
would make that two or three blacks out of 100 employees? What did they not meet? I don't what do a hiring process. Meet? I can just tell you what, what, when Chief Kuffner came into my department and made me the CLIA manager, that was the first time that we ever, as, as a, a, a town, had to show that we are doing everything we can to hire minorities. That's the first time. I've been working there since 1980, okay? And, and was it not done? You bet. Is it being done now? Yes. We make sure that we visit the colleges. We make sure that we work with, with local NAACP. I don't think that can be any different if I move over to this building, okay? You gotta work as a team, okay? You can't be just one. Okay, Mr. Hackley. Um, questions to Sandy and it and and obviously um, it's I'm sure it's um, an informational piece to most individuals that are attending the forum tonight. So it's obvious that the circuit clerk is really involved in bringing in revenue to the county. Correct. We administer whatever we administer. is collected. Correct. So you administrate the fines that comes out of the courts. Correct. Correct. And the state's attorney. All right. So with that, we're, we're talking, I got so many questions here. That's saying Mr. Hackley saying that's 16 million. And Mr. Fry said that you just posted a press release that you've collected. 4.65. Oh, here, I've got that press release here. 4.5 million? Four, yeah, yeah, something like that. Four point. So it is real important of the circuit clerk to do the respective job to bring revenue in to assist the citizens of, of the county. And so we have two questions here, and it revolves around all of the uncollected monies and the monies that's due and unpaid fees. Uh, and the question is to you, uh, Ms. Siasi, what technology advance do you envision or where are we that can be introduced into your office to make the system more efficient, what is the best way to comply with the new e-file mandate from Springfield? Okay, those are two separate issues. Right. Um, but as far as the collecting, the collections, I mean, people come in, they pay, they pay with a credit card, they pay by uh, cashier's check money order, um, they come in person, they send it by mail, they do it from home, it's pretty convenient. As far as the e-filing mandate, what was that? What part was that question? What is the best way to comply with the new e-file mandate from Springfield? Okay, that we are going to be. Um, whenever people e-file, the one thing that will happen too is that we will be collecting that money electronically as well. They have. Uh, um, Tyler Technologies is the company that is um, moving forward with this project that was chosen by the state of Illinois. And they have a bank that they will be utilizing. So we will be uh, integrating for less, for a better phrase, uh, with that bank. And so when the people file their new filings, they will be paying by credit card or some other means of money that will already be electronically shipped over. That will save us a lot of time and energy. Mr. Hackley? As, as far as the collection process, it, it, it does not work. Uh, when, when Ms. Cianci says that she's telling everybody what they're getting, this is what they're getting. They're getting checks made out to the towns. And for example, here's a $6,174 check that's given to the village of Bourbon A. Now, they get this, they don't know where it goes. Last year, there were 7,716 tickets written between Bradley, Bourbon A, Mantino, and who did I miss? Bradley, Bourbon A, Mantino, and Kankakee. $481,000 was taken from the office given to those four towns via a check that just said, here's a check for $12,000, where does it go? So first of all, you gotta help the towns figure out who's even owing the money, okay? We don't know. 
we haven't reconciled the ticket in years. That means if you got a ticket and you paid it, we don't know. Okay, that's a problem. And as far as all this big fancy uh, uh, things that we need to fix it, we already have it in place. The county runs a system called New World and they don't use it, but every other town does. Thank you, Mr. Hackley. Mr. Fry, you have the next question and the question is to Mr. Hackley. Mr. Hackley, if I'm correct, you had uh, mentioned earlier you feel there's some divisions within county government, within the respective offices. Are you talking about county clerk, auditor, what I've have got you? That have you sensed I'm that? new. I'm not a politician. Okay. But when I came out and started getting involved with this, it, it seemed that when I'd say, you know, couldn't this help? And it was always be the answer, well, it's not, really not my job. Okay. Yeah, it's everybody's job. You know, no matter if it's whatever it is, you've got to get together as a team. I didn't see that. Okay, so yes, there's, I think there's, this is my stuff, and I'm going to work with it. The $16 million, that's the, that's the state's attorney's problem. Okay, I'll just keep showing up. Ms. Sancy, how would you respond to the relationship between your office and the rest of those in the county government? Well, I believe that we all work well together. Uh, all the departments, we all have a good relationship. Uh, we help each other out this week. There was an issue with the state's attorney's office um, with some things that somebody called and asked if we could help out with some cost order information and we were happy to provide that for them. Um, as far as the uh, back to the checks again, we offered and we sent a letter to everybody and only two villages responded or two municipalities and maybe I need to send that letter out again and we'd be more than happy. Um, I've asked personally one of the police chiefs if they cared uh, about this particular issue and he said he didn't care, he just wanted his money. So um, I will send the letter out again and we can start sending the reports for everybody and that will work. Mr. Jackson, a question is to Ms. Cianci. Yes, I want to, um, if I may, get back to the question I asked earlier. Um, first of all, two parts. What is your educational background uh, with respect to this job especially? And secondly, um, in light of your um, inability to cite with any degree of certainty the number of African Americans working in your in your office, why should African Americans vote for you as circuit clerk? Okay, the first part is my educational experience or my my your educational background. My educational background. I have a I graduated from Bradley Burbank Community High School. I graduated from KCC with an associate's degree. I graduated from Olivet Nazarene University with a bachelor's degree and a master's in business. MBA, the MBA program. And I did all of those when I was an adult, after, also as a working individual. So then. Second question is why should African Americans vote for you when you represent to this body here that you have about four African Americans? I can't believe your department's that big that you can't count how many African Americans you actually have employed within your department, within the circuit clerk's office? Okay, well we do have four employed in the circuit clerk's office. Out we, of how many employees? 33. And now, how does that relate to the percentage of the community? African Americans in a community? It doesn't. All right, so then that leads to the final question. Why should African Americans cast a vote for you? Because I'm the most qualified candidate that stands here today. Mr. Hackley. I have a bachelor's in management uh, and I got that from Calumet College. It helped me to better understand uh, but then I moved on and, and I told you that I was the CALEA manager. And for everybody in the, in the room, a CALEA manager is, is uh, the person who takes your police department and makes sure it does what it's supposed to do. And, and 
over 470 things are taken apart and, and that was my job to make sure that we did every one of those things correctly and we could show proof of that. That's what I want to bring to this office. I want to bring that we are doing what we're supposed to be doing. I want to bring that I can reach out and help whoever it may be. I want to be able to take care of the, the program, like I said, with the amnesty program. It's crazy. I have people that come in wanting to get a, a, a quick alpha report so they can rent an apartment, but yet they have things on their record that will not allow them to do that. We need to work and show how to expunge. We need classes to show how, how we can get people in to uh, get things off their records thank, when thank, it's legally that time thank to Thank you, do Mr. It. Hackley. But I, I have a, a question back to Ms. Siassi and you, Mr. Hackley. Uh, the question that was just raised, um, with your proposal of the amnesty program, one, how do you propose to enact your uh, amnesty plan? And with the current budget of uh, which the county proposed, and how would that affect the office? Well, first of all, the amnesty program would be something I would want to work and collaborate and, with as a, and as the a other, team. And the other, I guess it's just my thought. Now, according to what Mrs. Siansi had stated earlier, we're, we're getting a lot of our mandates or directions from the state's attorney's office, is that correct? So how would you deal with the amnesty program, one? Two, with the current uh, problem with the county budget, how would that uh, affect the office? And the question would be coming back to you also. So first of all, I, I would work as, as a group. We gotta get together as a community to figure that out. So we, we're, gonna, we're gonna get a team together to figure out the amnesty program. It's pretty simplistic though. All, I, all we're gonna do is, is to look, you had a ticket 10 years ago, it's still here, pay the $25 fine that you were fined so that we can get you back on the street, we can get the thing cleared up off your record. How's that gonna affect the county's budget? It's gonna no, help no, no, because no, they didn't no, pay the $25. No, no, uh, you misunderstood what I, I'm saying. You're proposing an amnesty program. That's one. And with the current proposed budget that the county, the, the deficit that the county have, how would that, how would that affect your office? It, it's going, the effect to the office itself, I, I can only imagine that it's going to hurt if they're going to cut. But actually what they did this year, if you look at the proposed budget, the proposed budget for the circuit clerk's office has actually risen uh, to, to pay for some of the computer uh, needs or something that they need to have. Uh, it's over the other one. So it's going to hurt, but it's what you're going to have to do. Okay. Sandy, um, how does the current or proposed uh, budget affect the office and the proposal or uh, I'm just trying to, if the, I'm, if the state's attorney mandates or pretty much give you the directions on how to do, how would a proposed amnesty program work in the circuit clerk office? For the amnesty program, the only way it would work is if the state's attorney uh, took back the collected Harris and Harris portion of it. I'm using Harris and Harris because that's who it is. Um, I know that um, they're doing this in Cook County and they don't have Harris and Harris, so I don't know who they have and what kind of a plan they have. But in the instance of Will County where they add the 5%, 10%, and 15% for the late fees, that is the only part that can be amnestied as far as I know. And so when I was using the example of the $120 traffic ticket and how the money would compound and get sent off and whatever, at best the amount that would be forgiven is around just under $40. So they would still owe the $120 court order. That wouldn't be forgiven, to my knowledge. Um, as far as the budget goes, um, Yes, the county board did increase my budget slightly, but it costs us one point, almost four million dollars to run our office, and they gave me eight hundred thousand. So, in the general fund, um, the 
uh, automation fund and the document storage fund has been um, supporting a bond that was taken out to do the automation for our court view uh, computerizations that we have and um, I those two funds were paying around three hundred thousand dollars a year with that tax abatement that the county did um, this last year they took that off and so that three hundred thousand dollars is able to be kept in my fund however with the uh, e-filing initiative that it, the, the amount of money that's going to be owed is yet to be determined. Um, this has all come on pretty quick with the Supreme Court. Uh, right now I know that to integrate with Courtview and Tyler Technologies, it'll be right around $140,000. And then there's another part of it. Uh, well, and then that, we will have to pay a maintenance fee of $11,000 a year. We already pay $105,000 a year maintenance on court view, so that'll, you know, right there is a that's half of what you know. Just the maintenance alone is is half of that money, and then the other half is going to go uh, towards the the hardware and everything to get the computer stations in place. So, is there, how do the special fund is used? Well, the special funds are um, they're lined out in the circuit in the clerk of the court act um, any of the every civil case there's a our fee sheet explains when you file a lawsuit so much goes to court security so much goes to document storage so much goes to automation there's you know five or six funds that are either statutorily ordered by the state or through county board order so that money is collected through there Thank you. Mr. Hackley, do you have any rebuttal or anything said since we actually gone over each of the questions? So you have anything else? No say? rebuttal, no. no. Okay. Mr. Fry, you have the next question and the questions to Ms. Sianson. Concerns about the physical condition of the county buildings of surface. Perhaps they're old and antiquated. Um, obviously, there's not a lot of money to go around, but it seems like there's been at least informal talk about uh, searching out a new facility. What is the condition of your office? In a perfect world, would it be better if you had a different one? Well, of course, in a perfect world, it would be better that I had a, a better location and facility. Um, right now, I have offices on three floors in several different locations. There are supervise There's a supervisor that has staff in three offices as well. She and the chief deputy and myself, we oversee that people all over the place. So it would be helpful if we could have everybody in their own areas so that they could work in better together. But right now we're doing the best we can with what we have. And we're Mr. overcrowded. Hacker, what, what are your thoughts about the uh, uh, facilities? I assume you've seen them. Are they adequate? Or again, in a perfect world, would it be better to be someplace else? Always in a perfect world. But once again, we have to look at, at government. Uh, I've worked in government for more than 30 years, and it just expands. It doesn't ever bring itself back. Uh, we need to take a look and make sure that uh, my way of looking at it is, is every dollar I spend, it's my dollar. Uh, we're going to get the people, that they, the things they need to do the job, but we also have to make sure that if we're given the money, which several years they've been given funds to do the job, and then it gets raided, taken away each year, and put back into the general fund. You need someone to tell the people this. It's just like today, $16 million, folks. This is right out of what she put in the minutes, $16 million. Doesn't that make some of you scratch your head if you lost $16 million? Okay, that is a lot of money, and here we are now, and we're just gonna talk about it, Oh, don't worry about it. It's just in the basement. Leave it alone. So we got to come together and, and work and get this, the funds that we need. We got to, I guess you call it a whistleblower. Mr. Hackley. Yes. Um, one of the questions here, um, it states, it's talking about the, the 16 million. Is that in the, in the minutes? That, yes. Do I get just, time to, yeah. as I look it up? Or do you just want to tell me no. you said it? No, I'm just, 
I mean, it's a series of, I mean, actually, I mean, we have a number of the questions, and they're talking about, majority of the questions here are from the audience are, are sure. really about unpaid fines. And I'm just making sure. February 18, 2014 minutes. This is the county board minutes. You can go get these, okay? Says, Mr. Scott asked if they have a running total of what is owed to the county. Answer, Ms. Cianci stated the county is owed $16 million. Mr. Scott asked if there was any other way to recover the money, and then they go on to talk about the eyedrop system. Right? This is county so, board okay. minutes. So if it's $16 million, so we're talking about from 20, 25, 30 years, or how, how did we come up with $16 million? That's That was in 2014. 2014. 2014 is when that those minutes were from and no one knew about it let's let's face it you got a job to do mr Hackley. she's not sorry, there. Yes. So, so the we, minutes were from 2014 and how we came up, up about with that number is harris and harris we have we have staff that work really hard at entering the uh, debt into the system so that it can go to Harris so that they can try to attempt to find these people and collect the money. We are going through the backlog. Um, we used to have a court that uh, did the collections and that's no longer allowable by law. So when the collection agency came together, the money that we keep adding into the system is it's compounding it's more than 16 million at this point but i don't know what else okay. how else to answer that all right so the question mr mr fry you have another question my question has to do with all this money floating around mr C uh, mr hackley question my question has to do with the amount of money that's supposedly owed, that's $16 million, I assume. Uh, but the prior debate, uh, I think Attorney Rowe spoke about a forensic audit. My question is, is there any money missing that has been collected by any of the entities, the towns or whatever, that you haven't gotten? I have been told stories that money has been come up missing. I don't know whether that's something that she wants to address. Uh, and then it got put back, uh, those kind of things, those are stories you hear. Uh, is, is there a problem? Yes. Do we need a forensic audit? Yes. It's a $25 million corporation and $16 million sitting in the basement. It didn't happen overnight. Follow up question. And that is who, who hired Harris and Harris? She, uh, they, that's the mandate from the state's attorney's office. But, but also when you check the listing on who gives who money, Harrison Harris is one of her supporters. Uh, gave her a check for $400. But I don't think they really want my plan, which is to take the stuff back. Ms. Siasi, you have the uh, question to Mr. Taylor. Can you repeat that question, please? My question basically was that out of all of the entities that interact with your agency, you're part of the county government, is there any money missing from any of the towns, villages, or anyone that should be paying? No. The villages and the towns, they don't pay us. We're the ones that collect the money and deliver it to them. My question, I understand. My question is, is there any, in all of this mirage of money going every, wherever it goes, and to your knowledge, is there any of the money missing? When the candidate asked for a forensic audit, I believe he must have meant the entire county government, which would include your part of it. Okay. And I would say you gotta do it. You gotta understand how the, I said, 7,716 tickets. Hackley. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Mr. Jackson, you have a question, and the question is, is to Mr. Hackley. E-filing is just around the corner. And uh, Ms. Siance uh, has mentioned training. I know that attorneys are being trained right now. Uh, they are in Peoria and I know they are in other parts of the state uh, and their staffs. But what are we doing, if anything, to train the public that 
files their own lawsuit and does not use an attorney? Uh, well, how are we training them to, uh, to e-file their complaints? That now, to me? Yes. Yeah, you, you get to start with the question, but she probably... Oh, I can tell you th that there's things, I, once again, I know. Like I said, people come to my window every day a a at the Village of Bradley for records. They, wanna, they want to know what they've done. They want to know things that, that have happened in their life. They don't know what the word expungement is, okay? And, and that's wrong because what's happening is those that have the money, those that have the abilities, are having their records expunged, so we're not teaching anybody anything, okay? So we have to teach people what your rights are, what you can do, and what you should be doing. Well, e-filing is actually filing of complaints. They're no right. longer going to be able to file a complaint over the counter. There won't be a clerk there stamping paperwork. Uh, you won't be able to send your clerk to the circuit clerk's office at 4 o'clock in the afternoon and expect somebody to, uh, to get it. The, the beauty of it is, though, you'll have 24-hour filing for attorneys, and so you can file it from the... Uh, from the comfort of your own office. But uh, recently there's been an uptick in the number of complaints filed by individuals who represent themselves, the public. And so the question is, what provisions are being made to train those individuals on how to e-file? Because they won't be able to come to the courthouse and bring their complaint uh, to your office anymore. Correct. They, we are going to have at least three stations that people can come in and use. We will be doing uh, group efforts, symposiums, uh, working with the Bar Association is one of my plans uh, to have them give the legal advice because we can't do that. The circuit clerk's office cannot give legal advice. And then uh, we will have people at the uh, computer stations in our office and they will be taught how to help. Another thing that the uh, Access to Justice is doing is they have, they're making a lot of the forms user friendly for self-represented litigants. And while it creates a, a larger document, it is very self-explanatory. It'll show in the box on the left, it'll say number one, place your name. So then you go find number one, you place your name. Number two, you know, and it goes on and on and on. And it makes it very helpful for the self-represented litigant. There's a symposium on October 28th. Um, I've been to a couple of them so far. And um, it's, it's a very uh, concerted effort with the courts and the state to get the help to the self-represented litigants. And I support that. Mr. I, I have a, it's a question here from uh, the, the audience. The cybersecurity cyber security situation is of great importance to me. What is being done to protect taxpayers' personal information? Can anybody go ahead? Yeah. Well, there are, are a lot of uh, documents now that are supposed, there's a Supreme Court rule that says that the attorney or whomever, the self-represented litigant, they can file, they have to file the original and then they can file a redacted copy and we would put the original in a, in a folder. When the, I mean in an envelope and seal it. And then um, whenever we get the e-filing mandate completed, then we will be able to have the ability to seal that particular document electronically and the people that are filing it, they're the ones that are supposed to uh, do the, the overview and the redaction. They wrote that right into the Supreme Court rule that the clerk is not supposed to go through the documents. And that can be a serious deal in like a lawsuit in the civil cases, a medical malpractice or something. There will be terminology and you know the document can be this thick and the clerk is not responsible to go through and make sure that everything is redacted. They made sure that that was in the statute. Uh, the article from the Daily Journal, it, it says, can Kiki County government become a cybercrime victim? It, it's going to happen again. 
because there hasn't been any steps taken to secure where the data is going to be kept. Once again, is it going to cost us a lot of money? No. The Sheriff's Department runs the New World system. They have a system out there that is better than Fort Knox. But somehow or another, we're running these servers, in, I don't know if it's in her office or wherever it may be, where as a county we need to come together and if we need to put it in one place and have one team keep it secure, that's what we need to do. It won't cost us anything, we just gotta start knowing what everybody else is doing. Because as it stands right now, what were you down, a couple weeks, something like that? Uh, we can't just put in Norton antivirus and think it's gonna work. Right. Thank you, uh, Mr. Hackley. Thank you, uh, Ms. Cianci. And thank the audience for taking your time out of your schedule to attend the circuit clerk forum. I want to thank Mr. Taylor, Mr. Fryer, and Mr. Jackson, and our timer, Mr. Jess Gathern. We are in the segment of our closing uh, statement. Mr. Hackley, you start and you have three minutes, followed by Ms. Siasi. Thank you all for coming. I really appreciate it. I, like I said in the beginning, I'm not a politician. When you see us out, it's my wife and I that walk the parades because we like to throw the candy. Uh, we don't have uh, uh, banners, we don't bring a band with us, uh, it, it's us. And, and I like to fix things. And, and something inside me said, this has got to get fixed. Okay? And, and then when I started the whole process, what really got me going was, the first thing to do was, you saw all the stuff in the paper about the nominating petitions. We had nominating petitions that weren't right. Uh, we had nominating petitions that were hung on walls in other towns, pre-notarized, and then later pulled off the wall and signed by her, okay? If you're the circuit clerk, you shouldn't be breaking the law, okay? That's kind of the first thing. So that got me really thinking about it. The next time is when her employees called me in and said, let's have a talk. We did. They told me the problems that are there and I, I know I can fix this, okay? And I know that they will work with me because they support me. Uh, they have endorsed me over their own boss. Uh, we really need to work as a team in Kankakee County. It's not a one person. Uh, my taxes in 1999 were, the county was number four on my list, my taxes. In 2015, the county is now number three on my list. What's going on, okay? The village of Bradley went up $7 in that time frame. The county government went up over $200 for me. I have police cars, I got fire trucks, I got street sweepers, I got a lot of stuff going on in my town and it was all paid for and it only cost me $7 more in that time frame. What's going on here, guys? We've got to figure this out. Why did it get from here to here? And that's when we really all have to come together and go, look, $16 million is missing? I, I'm a shouter-outer, okay? I'll go stand in front of the courthouse and let you guys know every day if we're down to fifteen nine ninety nine, okay? Somebody's got to tell you. You shouldn't just be, 30 seconds, you shouldn't just find this out. And you shouldn't also just be casually going, it's 16 million, okay? Because we're paying this, okay? It's gotta stop. Thank you, Mr. Hackman. Ms. Cianci, you have three minutes of closing statement. Thank you. Thank you again for your time and thank you to the NAACP for inviting us here tonight so that you can hear firsthand the differences between the two candidates. I am asking for your vote because I am the most qualified candidate. I have 12 years experience in the office, six of those years as the circuit clerk. As far as uh, the petitions go, that went through an electoral board hearing and it was found in my favor and then it went to circuit court and it was also found in my favor. If they wanted to appeal it, they could have done that and they didn't. So I'm going to let that rest right there. As far as the checks go, we have offered to, like I said, we offered it originally to give them the detailed reports 
and the only ones that reported back was Aroma Park and the Conservation Police. I'm happy to send a letter again to let everybody know that that is available, and if they're interested, they are more than welcome to the information. And I can't think of the other thing the I wanted to The support of your employees. Oh, the support of my employees. Yes, that's a good one. Thank you. As a matter of fact, there was only 14 people there out of about uh, two-thirds. Pardon? There were only 14 members at that meeting, and so I would accept that if it were a fair vote, but there were two-thirds people that didn't get to vote. So if they all had gotten the chance to vote, then I'd, be, I'd accept it, but I don't accept that. I take the responsibility of maintaining the court records seriously. I pitch in when needed to cover customer service, balance the financial records at the end of the day, and help with some of the most obscure requests from our legal community and the public. I accept the challenge of the e-filing initiative the state Supreme Court has bestowed upon the office and look forward to the task. I look forward to working with the new state's attorney in regards to collection efforts and any other project he may wish to initiate under his authority and guidance. I am asking for your vote. It is crucial to the voters of Kankakee that I be reelected to complete the projects at hand and lead the circuit clerk's office through the next phase of governmental business. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Hiasi. Thank you, Mr. Hackley. And thank you.